Hey guys, we're back in business, baby. Well, not really. I guess you kind of have to make money to be in business. I, I keep telling my wife that likes are worth more than gold, but she doesn't understand. So anyway, <laughs> so anyway, in this episode, I decided to enter my local park and show you some ways you could find your center, height, your balance. Even in a park like this, we don't need a climbing gym to have some fun and do some training. So let me show you some ways to find your center and why it's important in climbing. So uh, let's get right into that. Now, if you ever saw a professional climber climb up a climb, you might have noticed how easy they make it look. And that's mostly because they have great uh, center of balance and control. They know where their, their body is at all times. And one of the best training tools for that is actually a slack line. So the first tip is definitely get a slack line. And you can get one for pretty cheap. I even they sell at places like REI and stuff like that. And you just go to your park, you find a couple trees, and you put a slack line. If you're just starting out, you don't need to be way off the ground. You could have the slack line only a couple feet off the ground. So if you fall off, you know, you don't have to worry about breaking a leg or an ankle or anything like that. But as you get better, you can make it higher. And as you make it higher, it actually helps with your mental game because um, I don't know if you ever heard the term sewing machine leg, but if, you, if you're climbing and you're, you're in a sketchy area, your leg will start actually, they call it the sewing machine, it'll start shaking like this. You'll see a climber start shaking their body, their mental game is so weak that they're, they get so gripped that their body literally throws them off the climb. So you want to strengthen your mental game too. And one of the ways of doing that is just getting in a more, more comfortable being uncomfortable. And what I mean by that is you could raise the slack line a bit more. And as you actually, since you're brand new, if you're brand new to slack lining, you actually get that sewing machine effect in the slack line and your, your body will start shaking the slack line before you can even get your weight. Cause you're, it's so uncomfortable to you that you just don't even want to be there. Your body wants to throw yourself right off it. So that's why this is a great tool. Now I'll show you uh, some tips on getting started and how to use one of these. So let's get to the other side here. My first tip is if you're going to get a slack line, get a long one because you might not be able to find two trees in a nice spot that you like that are close enough. This one's like a 90 footer. You can get it even longer. And then also as you get better, you're going to just naturally want to go farther and farther. So first tip, Get a nice long slack line. <laughs> okay, so now we're at the part of the tree where you're, we're gonna be ratcheting it down to tighten it up. And it just uses simple trucker strap ratchet to tighten it up. And now that I'm here, let me show you a little trick, a little tip or something that you might not know. Now, we all know that tying a knot in a rope kind of weakens the strength of the rope because the knot pinches down on it. And one of the ways that people one of the ways that you, a person could make a natural anchor and retain the strength in the rope is instead of tying a knot, is they just keep wrapping the rope around and the more times a rope goes around, the more friction on the tree there is. So you could actually, to make a natural anchor, not really in this setup, I'm not gonna do it in this setup, but with a climbing rope, to retain the strength in the rope, you could just wrap it around six times and then by the time you get to like, maybe six times or something like that. You can actually have slack right here and just clip it in and it'll be strong enough to, you won't be able to pull it. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be so strong that you're not gonna be able to pull it over. So that's one of the ways to not even have to tie a knot. You just wrap it around the tree a bunch of times and then uh, clip a lock. I, I have to get into another video about that. To show you. That might not have made too, too much sense. Maybe it did. Let me know in the comments below if that made sense. But basically, just wrap it around the tree a bunch of times and then you can just clip it in without even tension on the clip. And just the tension from the roping around the tree is good enough. I'm not gonna do that here because I probably bust my ass and I don't really have a beaner to clip it in. This actually has a loop and you just throw it through the loop there and then you just tighten it up and that's, that's that. But that was just a quick little rabbit hole I just wanted to go down. I'll have to show you that in, a, in another video. Let me tighten this up, baby. The other thing is I, I like to tie, I like to tie this closer to the tree if I can, 
because I don't like having to step over it, but it's not really the worst thing in the world. Okay, we got our rope on. Just about ready to ratchet. This makes it pretty simple. More complicated ones. You have to create pulley systems and stuff to tighten it up, but this makes it pretty easy. Okay, there we go. Done. All right, so it's pretty obvious why this is a great balancing exercise tool. You kind of have to really find your center, relax. And what you're gonna do is you're not gonna look at your feet. Your brain has really complicated gyros and systems and fluids and all stuff in it to figure out how to stay balanced and where it's gonna go. So you're gonna have to look where you wanna go. And by looking at your feet, that ain't gonna work. Look at the line and then just look straight up a bit maybe the center of the tree of wherever you hook up to and then your body kind of just follows where your head is pointing at and then you're gonna have your arms out and then you're gonna find your center and that's really just a quick tip you can see my body's still got a lot of shakes in it and as you get better you get all the shakes out and your body finds its center so slack lining, I really can't say enough about it. It's probably one of the best tools to find your center of gravity and your balance. And after a while, I could even go backwards. And there's probably guys on my channel, on my subscribers, that are 100 times better at this than I am. I could balance and stuff and jump, but it's been a while. Some of these guys could probably do backflips and land them. <laughs> Stay focused and keep training on one of these and you'll be a master at your craft. Also, these are pretty wide. Get really thin ones. Ding a ling a ling ling. Ding a ding a ding ding. <sighs> My last great tip is just actually the ancient art of tree climbing. Now there's actually a lot of cool trees, just like this sycamore tree that has all kinds of interesting shapes and just like, well, holes, I guess, really, to just train your climbing on. And you don't have to go all the way to the top of the tree. You can too. You can use one of my uh, climbing techniques I have on my channel to rig up something so you can go way up high and say hello to the squirrels and come back down. Everybody around will probably think you're a freaking wacko. Actually, you know, people usually think climbers are like insane. So you end up doing that, they'll probably come and arrest you just because you're crazy, they think you're crazy. But I don't know, get a crash pad. You don't got to climb too high. And there's all kinds of like interesting holds. You could, you could work on your footwork and your balance and all kinds of things. Just climbing trees. Nothing lives in there. Let's see if we can find some interesting other tree, harder trees to climb. Sycamore trees, they could either be really hard or they could be really easy. Like this one's got all kinds of bumps and holds to grab onto. But some are just smooth, blank sheets of nothing. They don't really have bark on them. And you can find something that has some bark. Here's an interesting looking tree here. It's a little bit higher and it's not a sycamore tree. So it has some bark. Now also, you know, the thing with like these trees is the, obviously the bark's gonna fall off. And I think there's certain types of the time of the season when the bark's actually weaker and comes off easier. I'm not sure about that. If you know that, leave it down in the comments. But, but what's cool about this is you could get your climbing shoes onto some good spots in the bark 
which is it's obviously an oddball way of climbing, but if you if you grew if you grew up with squirrels, then uh, then it could be such something you do. It has a nice little notch right here. It's little bark spots here. I don't know how how likely it is for you to get thrown out of the park for climbing a tree. Pretty cool little knobs. Obviously you don't want to go up too high because you don't want to fall down and break your ankle. Which is a good thing because uh, it's a good thing that you could um, also train your down climbing ability. So you go up and then you just come back down. Pretty cool. Yeah, I'll go up, I'll come down and then I'll, and then I'll go back up. You can also set a rope. You, you just throw a rope over the top there and then you're secure and you go back down and also train your your uh, your rope rigging skills. See, there's another tree over here. That one was not very interesting. <laughs> kind of interesting, but not extremely interesting. It was basically a one move wonder right there. Just a lunge up to that thing. It's like, what's the goal? Do you want to get to the top of the tree? Look at the whole town or do you just want to make some moves and get some exercise? Ah. Okay, right here we have a chimney exercise. It's all kinds of different exercises you could find if you got your eyes open. This would be like a five, seven chimney. Work your way up and then work your way back down. I wonder what it would be like having a chalk bag. You could probably, I wonder how high it could go too. You could probably go really high, but you don't want to go any more than maybe this high and then back down. If you go up and down enough times, you'll get really good at it. And that's the whole point. It also look like a, it also look like a nutcase. <laughs> If everyone asks, you just tell them you're a squirrel hunter. You're a squirrel hunter extraordinaire. What are you, what are you doing here? What are you doing? Just hunting squirrels, what does it look like I'm doing? You got a permit? See, now that's when, that's when you have to kind of like already have a game plan and you pull out the squirrel hunting permit. You go, right here, officer. Here's my squirrel hunting permit. So what the hell? There's actually a squirrel hunting permit? <laughs> <laughs> Not even 30 feet away, we have a little bit of a overhang exercise right here. <sighs> Gotta do pack to the heel hook. <sighs> what is this, a mantle? <sighs> hey, bam. A little bit of an overhang. In the tree. Nice. And then you gotta get back down, of course. Which is sometimes harder than getting up. You definitely don't wanna fall down on these type of shoes. Some shoes, some climbing shoes, you could land on and you'd be fine. And some climbing shoes with these arches in them, don't wanna be landing. So you, it's another little tip. Buy the right shoes for the right situation. This would be another nice way up too. Back down. Yeah, you don't want to jump on these shoes. Hurt your feet. Ha! <laughs> What do you guys know? Forgot to film an outro again. Good thing I'm not a professional YouTuber or anything. So, uh, yeah, I hope this video inspired you to get out there and do something a little crazy and nuts and get some exercise. 
I know some of you guys hit me up and you're like, what do I do? All the climbing gyms are closed. Well, there's some options for you. Get out there and do something. Climbing's a, climbing is a lifestyle. It's a mindset. See something you want to climb, go climb it. Unless it's somebody's private property. 